Sales Hub, everybody. This is Durian Productions. We have a brand new Lenovo Yoga C740 here on open box. Let us first look at its spec sheet. It houses a 10th generation Intel i5, processor 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of solid state drive. This one is a gold color model. Out of the yoga box, you get a Type-C charger, a converter, and a laptop. The 14-inch yoga looks really gorgeous. The gold is kind of silverish and not really shiny. This is a beautiful laptop. The metallic chassis is really premium. It's quite resistive to fingerprint, not as quite not like some low end laptops which are quite attractive to fingerprint. It feels definitely better than those idea pad series. The color of the screws are also silver. It looks pretty uniform. The metallic chases is quite hard and pretty hard to press inside. It is definitely not a soft laptop. On the one side there is two type C port, one capable of charging another side one type A port with a power button there. While we are expecting slightly a bit more ports because once you open the back panel there is still some room inside for more ports. You are not supposed to use single hand to open it. It's probably due to that the hinge is pretty tight and pretty sturdy due to it's a yoga series. Well, we still want that if it is possible to open it, use just a single hand because it's a yoga and meant for flip with ease. Unlike those HP laptops, the yoga fringe uh, the yoga fringe is very sturdy and you can hardly move it when you make it in stand mode. This is a very good side because you definitely want to use a sturdy hinge rather than an unsturdy one. The screen is a 14-inch 1080p screen for black. There is a webcam in the top, while pretty good, especially for the COVID-19 series. You can physically block the camera using the small plastic. The keyboard and the chases are similarly gold, which is a good side. Unlike some laptops, the keyboard is another color. The keyboard feels pretty okay. The good side is that the cap is still large as general Lenovo laptops and you can easily find the keys, although the response is not that much good at ThinkPad series. The trackpad is also pretty okay, just normal. The good side is that there is a glass panel that it, it is more smooth it is smoother than cheap laptops. This is overall a premium device and it has a fingerprint sensor on a certain side. Even the Lenovo logo is crafted into a gold color. The soundbar is pretty big and we will look whether it is good a bit later. We have already set up the laptop. Let us now power it on. The backlit keyboard is just good enough, not too shiny, not too dark, and there is no ugly backlit leakage. The first time on green, the screen is definitely a good one. It has very high contrast ratio, good brightness, and pretty vivid color. If you open app, web browser, calculator, and the mail, everything is pretty smooth. It is not on the very fast side, but definitely it has a very stable performance. You do not need to worry about that. One of the best side about the performance is that although the speed responsive rate is on the average side, the fan is never working. While 
It's working, but you cannot hear it at all. It's very quiet. Going to a YouTube video through London Tube Singer. All she was trying to do was catch a train in the London tube, and now she is one of the hottest videos on the internet. Here's why. Finish the lyrics. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Wow. <laughs> keep going. So wow, you're really good. Keep going. Life changed here before I'm shallow from Essex, England. Please welcome Charlotte Aubrey. Tell me something, boy. Aren't you tired trying to feel that boy? Or do you need more? The screen quality is reasonably good. It is not really comparable to the latest MacBook series, but if you are comparing it to the older MacBook 2015 model, then it is pretty comparable. Bear in mind that even most latest models are not comparable to even the 2015 model of MacBook Pro. The contrast ratio is pretty good, the color is pretty vivid, and overall it is a decent screen in its price range and generally better than Dell or HP counterparts in the same price range. But it is not as good as the Huawei MateBook 13 or 14 and Huawei has somewhat better brightness and bright evenness. As for the sound quality, it is really a premium one. It is only second to the best laptop ever tested, the C940 from Lenovo. It can slightly tremble my desk, but not really a knot. I'm quite impressed by the two sound bars at both sides of this laptop from such a slim chassis. It is kind of comparable to a cheap iPad. The hardware is a inter Core core CPU with 51 watt hour. The data charge rate is 5 to 6 watt in IO, and you generally will expect 5 or 6 hour light office work. Sometimes it will go up to 10 watts or slightly higher, probably due to some background activities. The motherboard has dual channel DDR4 RAM solder on board. The GPU is unfortunately a not that good one. The LCD is from BOE China. This is a good panel, except that the brightness is slightly on the low side. Solid state drive from Samsung, definitely the top model. Some benchmark on top of this machine. The RAM speed is pretty good, near to 40 gigahertz. Uh, near to 40 gigabytes latency around 85 to 90 which is kind of typical to this type of ultra portable convertibles the solid state drive benchmark is not that high but so long as you read the 4k speak then there's nothing too much to complain about the sandy bench r15 the gpu is around 60 frames per second this is probably due to its high ddr4 frequency which gives an edge in GPU performance though it's integrated. The CPU model thread is pretty bad, just 400 plus, approximately 60% of its top performance in 25 watts. Let's run the stability test on the CPU along. 
on idle mode, the temperature is very low, just 40 degrees plus. When started, the CPU is 2.3 gigahertz started at a low frequency with an 80 watt power envelope. The temperature goes to 70 Celsius degree in the central processing unit and we can hardly hear any fan noise till now. After 10 minutes of stability test, the fan is quite hearable, but definitely not loud and noisy. The CPU power envelope is just 18 watts with 70 Celsius degree. The frequency is pretty stable, around 2.5 GHz, which is pretty good. Now let's stop and add GPU into the stress test. After starting the stability test, the power envelope goes very high to 30 plus watts. We do not expect this to sustain for a long time. Just after a while, the frequency of CPU dropped to 2 point something gigahertz and is changing and jumping all the time. The GPU frequency is almost locked at 1.1 gigahertz and dropped slightly to 0.95 gigahertz. After some time, the CPU power is limited to 27 watts. After 5 minutes, the CPU frequency is limited to 1.7 GHz, while the GPU frequency is pretty stable, around 1 GHz. This is pr uh, pretty much a good performance output. You can expect a total of 17 to 18 watts on CPU and GPU together if you are running on battery. This is pretty okay for such a convertible phone, because this type of CPU is only targeted at 15 watts. This type of convertibles never has very good performance. The key is that you have a very stable hinge and you can use it as a tablet freely. For this laptop, we still prefer the smaller C640 because this laptop is still pretty heavy. You can hardly rotate it, you can hardly bring it on top, and it is pretty heavy. The good side is that the screen is very large and you have plenty of room to use the free pen to draw on top of the screen and use it as a canvas. Thank you for paying attention. Please like this video and do subscribe after watching. Thanks again.